Hi all, and welcome to my presentation. Today we'll be talking about uh, challenges of monitoring distributed systems. My name is uh, Nenad Božić, and I'm coming from uh, Serbia from company Smartcat, uh, where I'm, I co-founded that company, and I'm working as a technical consultant. Uh, we are dealing with, uh, we are doing big data engineering consulting and uh, data science. And in our day-to-day -day business, uh, clients uh, call us when problems arise, and we need uh, good and powerful insights from uh, monitoring systems in order to pinpoint the problem and uh, fix stuff. It is sort of similar like uh, when your car is broken. First thing that you will do is go to mechanic. Uh, modern cars these days have uh, powerful board computers and uh, you will hook in a uh, laptop. Mechanic will hook in laptop, uh, check out certain graphs and figure out uh, what part of the car is broken and get on with uh, fixing uh, this part of your engine. Uh, we need the same things in IT systems, and we are we are building many many companies these days are building uh, and trying to get the best uh, monitoring solution out there. It's really hot topic. Uh, how many of you are working uh, with uh, distributed systems these days? Can you raise your hand? <laughs> so distributed systems started to be a new normal, and how many of you are operating those systems? So maintaining, monitoring. Yeah, I feel your pain. Monitoring distributed systems is really hard. Uh, when you have single instance, basically if that the instance dies, uh, I think it's easy to figure out why. When you have distributed systems, failure on one, one node uh, propagates to the other node and so on. So things get complicated when you try to correlate uh, failures on different machines. So here is agenda. We'll first run and set some ground rules uh, in monitoring domain and uh, uh, we will explain important terms. Then we will run through metrics data stream and tools uh, which can help you visualize metrics. Then we will run to log data stream and uh, tools which can help you collect uh, log events. After that, we will show you how, I will show you how you can combine both metrics and logs because Looking at uh, metrics alone or logs alone is uh, not enough to explain all the failures. I think it's much better to combine those two and be in full control. And last but not least, we'll cover alerting and we will explain how you can step away from dashboards and continue on building your business logic while you let machine alert when certain failure happens. I'm a big fan of uh, domain-driven design and the uh, first thing that you will do is uh, set some ground rules uh, and create domain language. So let's do the, the same thing with monitoring. How we like to lo look at monitoring is it consists of three parts. You have metrics, logs, and alerts. Metrics are, uh, are showing you that your system is performing within thresholds or outside of thresholds and then it's time to investigate. Log data stream is uh, providing context. Uh, usually when you have certain peaks on metrics, you want to go to log and figure out what is going on, what caused uh, this peak to arise. Alerts, uh, as I said, uh, it is important not to look at when you, you don't have money for IT department looking at dashboards 24-7. You need to let machine, you need to figure out certain rules, let machine alert you when this problem is happening, and then go and browse and the rest of the time spend developing new features which are driving your business. All these three parts, uh, doing all these three parts right is hard. You need both uh, technical skill set and you need to understand business domain. At this picture, I'm going back to our example with mechanic. Uh, he's looking at uh, dashboard on computer and this dashboard to us doesn't uh, explain much, I would say. Uh, he, uh, he knows uh, mechanic domain and he knows uh, certain parameters and what is normal, what is uh, outside of normal. He's expert in his field. So he's both technical expert and probably understand domains. So he will ask you whether you're driving frequently, whether you're driving in Serbia where you have a bunch of bumps or you are driving in Germany where everything is flat. So he, he needs this domain knowledge and technical knowledge uh, to reason about those insights that uh, monitoring solutions are giving, giving us. So let's first touch uh, metrics data stream. As I said, as I said, metrics data stream is indicator that uh, everything is working uh, within ex expected boundaries. 
Uh, in my experience, it is easily forgotten feature. Uh, while you're developing your application, metrics are pushed aside, and we will do this uh, when we are in production. Let's build feature X, feature Y, and stuff. And then you go to production without any metrics, and failures start happening, and then it is already too late. Having good dashboards, uh, having good visualization is hard. Probably you will first start uh, graphing everything, then you will see that there is a lot of noise and uh, you cannot look at uh, that anymore. Then you will delete stuff, then failure will happen, and you will figure out that you're missing important information. So it's iterative process and uh, try to, I don't know, try to have retrospectives, talk with your team and try to, try to add stuff uh, which is missing and delete stuff which is creating noise. In distributed systems, uh, it is even harder because you have many graphs to watch and it is easy to fall into information overload trap. Uh, having a bunch of machines, uh, sending a bunch of metrics, looking at a bunch of graphs. So you really need to have these retrospectives and tighten up your monitoring stack. When you are thinking about metrics uh, data stream, you are faced with decisions. Uh, which stack to choose? Where should you go with uh, self-managed uh, solution or software as a service solution. Also, there is uh, this question whether to pay for something or use uh, something which is free open source. Uh, those decisions are important and uh, mostly they are made uh, based on your use case, so you, know, you need to know use case. I can give you context how we, how we reasoned about it. Uh, we needed to provide uh, guarantees, uh, latency guarantees in 24 hour span for 99.999% of requests. Uh, so they needed to be under certain threshold. And we went with uh, Datadog. Anyone from Datadog in audience? <laughs> I had this talk three weeks ago and uh, on ApacheCon and the guy from Datadog was in audience. So I need to, I needed to pay attention to what I'm talking about. Datadog uh, has uh, 300 dots on your, on your graph. So uh, if you look at 24 hour period, it will cre show you averages, not raw data. And in order to provide uh, SLA on this high nines, 99.999% of requests during a day, you need really raw data. And Datadog didn't uh, work for us. So we decided to go with uh, self-managed solution. It is trade-off. Uh, for self-managed solution, you will spend most of the, your time maintaining one more system, but then again, you will have better level of control, and uh, you can put a monitoring stack inside your VPC, and you can secure your data. And it is not always an option to send metrics to some third-party cloud-based provider, so you need to know your use case and make a decision based on use case. So let's run through stack that we choose the building this self-managed solution. We, choose the, we have chosen uh, Riemann and Sync Server. Riemann is a processing uh, framework uh, which is acting as a server on metrics machine. And you're using different clients uh, on your applications. So Riemann has Java client, Python client, and a whole bunch of clients. And you're basically sending selection of your metrics to Riemann server. And Riemann server is processing and storing those uh, events. Uh, it has integration with InfluxDB, and we have chosen InfluxDB because it has uh, measurement in its core. InfluxDB is a time series database which is storing uh, measurements with timestamp, value, fields, and tags. So it's perfect for time series measurements. It's built for that. This is its sole pur purpose. And it has good uh, integration with Grafana, which we are using for visualization. Grafana is a visualization, open source visualization tool with many visual aids. You can plot graphs, time series, tables, gouges, whatever. And uh, you can plug uh, data sources. And InfluxDB is one of uh, those data sources. And this is how one of uh, dashboards that we build uh, looks like. Uh, this is Cassandra cluster. Uh, and uh, on top you can see easily that uh, 12 nodes are up, so it is basically a health check. Uh, and on the left and right, this is total request rate on our cluster. And below that we plotted the uh, request rate per host, because uh, dealing with this kind of SLA and high nines, uh, we needed to figure out whether we have bad hosts in, in our infrastructure. So we needed really 
per host request rate. And you can see a peak uh, on, on, in the beginning of the graph. On single host, uh, there was increased request rate. This is probably a good place uh, to investigate further. You can see that uh, based on this uh, dashboard, you cannot explain why this peak happened. So you will either go to, I don't know, uh, uh, memory or disk or network uh, statistics, or you will, you will start, start browsing logs. When metrics uh, peaks, metrics peaks are indicators that something bad happened, and log uh, log log events are next thing that you will look uh, look at. Log log will logs will provide context. They will explain uh, from technical standpoint what happened, what can cause uh, cause this peak, uh, and usually. You are looking at metrics, uh, you're glancing into, into metrics, but with, when problems arise, you want to check, check logs. It has the same challenges as with, 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 as with mod, metrics. Uh, you need not to have too much information, you need not to have too few information. So it's, again, iterative process. You will first start logging everything with info level, then you will realize that uh, you have a lot of noise and uh, you will after you go to production, you probably you will narrow down log events only to important things. In distributed systems, it's, it is again uh, much harder because you have many terminals open and uh, it's, it's again easy to fall into information overload trap. This is how <laughs> our uh, initial approach uh, looked like. So with the help of CSS HX Mac tool, uh, we opened up uh, 12 uh, terminals for 12 nodes and we were tailing logs and no one could figure out what is going on because uh, it's impossible to look at logs on distributed systems like this. So we needed a better solution. Then again, we were faced uh, with uh, decisions. Uh, we needed to decide again whether to go with um, self-managed solution or software as a service solution. And again, we needed to figure out whether it, uh, it is good f to pay for so some solution or to use free solution. Decision, uh, based on our experience with Datadog, uh, we decided to go with self-managed solution, but um, it boils down to the same things as with metrics tech, technical team skill set, level of control that you want to have, and security of your data. I emphasize here security of your data. Metrics are just arbitrary values uh, with timestamps, so they are not providing many insight uh, from your application. Uh, with log, uh, story is different. Uh, I've seen many things in logs. Uh, people are logging email addresses and stuff, and it's not always an option to go with a cloud-based provider and push uh, many insight about your business to some arbitrary cloud-based uh, tool. So we decided to go with, uh, anyone not familiar with ELK here? So ELK, I guess, became uh, pretty much the standard when, uh, when you want to collect uh, log events from a bunch of machines and uh, visualize them on a single place. And with distributed systems, it's a must. You saw this 12 terminals example. So it consists of um, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Filebit is uh, placed on each of uh, machines and it is listening to log events. When new event arri uh, arrives, it, trigger, it, it, it gets triggered and ships it to Logstash. Logstash is there to process your log events, to split log event uh, into a bunch of parts or uh, to do something about log event. And then you will index uh, your log event to Elasticsearch, which is uh, good for, for free form, free text searches, which is uh, usually what you do in, with log event messages. And on top of that, you have Kibana's visualization tool, uh, which will, which is look, which looks something like this. So we, on top, you have a time span, uh, time span, uh, so you can you you can configure what what, what to look. Here it is 15 minutes. Below that, uh, there is uh, this white uh, Lucene query free form uh, edit box, so you can type any Lucene query. And in the middle, you have log events uh, sorted by time from different machines. This way, uh, you can uh, figure out at certain point in time what happened on each of your machines and how failure probably on one machine uh, did reflect on other machines in your system. Uh, 
Kibana also has visual visualization similar to what we showed with uh, Grafana. So this is uh, application errors uh, through time uh, on our stack. And you can see these uh, high graphs near the end of the time span. And this is probably a good place to research a bit further and go into row logs. But um, now we were faced with uh, two, two visualization tools. Uh, in Grafana, we were looking metrics. Then we were jumping to Kibana to look at logs. And having to look at uh, two tools is not convenient. Uh, we wanted better solution. We wanted to combine. Uh, everything under one umbrella. So, uh, again, I want to return to real world example why we did uh, all of this uh, to give you a more context. Uh, we needed to uh, we needed to provide uh, reliable guarantees that we'll have latency on 99.999 percent of requests during 24 hours under 100 milliseconds. And whole infrastructure was deployed to AWS. And we had a bunch of machines, uh, 20 Cassandra nodes, 10 applications. And it was really complex, uh, a really complex uh, infrastructure. So we needed uh, really good insights from our monitoring system in order to figure out, because single peak uh, can mess up our 24-hour SLA. Uh, Grafana is a good tool for combination. It has. Uh, Pluggable data sources and both InfluxDB and uh, Elasticsearch can be used uh, as data sources in Grafana. And this is what triggered us. Uh, we, already using, we are already using InfluxDB as data source uh, for our metrics. And we wanted to bring uh, our logs close to our metrics so we can visualize everything on a single screen and reason about it looking at single dashboard. This is our uh, stack. Uh, I already explained uh, pieces of it, so I will just uh, uh, run through it uh, fast. Uh, you, we have Riemann clients on, on machines. We are uh, these days uh, switching to Telegraph as well and uh, testing both in par parallel. Tele Telegraph is a, a process, open source processing tool by, by Influx Data. It has a bunch of uh, input plugins and a bunch of output plugins, and you can collect metrics, uh, I guess, more easily than, Re with, than with Riemann, because with Riemann you need to build application. And the Telegraph, for example, has out of the box uh, uh, OS uh, stack, net stats, uh, dstats collecting, and a uh, lot of uh, good things. And we are storing metrics in InfluxDB. And Orange is uh, our log data stream. We are having file bits sitting on machines, uh, shipping to log, log stash. Log stash is processing stuff, uh, storing in Elasticsearch. And we are still having Kibana to look at our row logs, because sometimes we need to jump into row logs and figure out what is going on. Uh, we are using Grafana on top of both InfluxDB and Elasticsearch. And uh, we are creating dashboards like this. Uh, on top, uh, we have. It looks a bit foggy, but uh, on top it's uh, slow queries uh, to Cassandra nodes. Uh, basically, we are storing each and every query about 25 milliseconds. And you can see that around 11.30 there are two purple dots which are around 12 seconds, which is not good. So, uh, and below, below that we are, storing, we are showing uh, drop messages on Cassandra. Cassandra is good uh, for uh, for performance and it's full toler tolerant and it is usually dropping messages when it has high load so it can uh, serve more messages so we wanted to check how slowness on machine influ uh, looks at uh, through in cassandra logs uh, you can see that at the exact same time when we have 12 seconds uh, queries we have drop messages on cassandra and below that you can see uh, actual details from logs, what kind of messages were dropped, uh, mutation, read uh, messages, and how many of them. So looking at this uh, sole dashboard, uh, you can uh, figure out that uh, latency on single machine caused, uh, caused um, Cassandra to drop messages. But looking at this dashboard, you cannot figure out uh, what was the root cause of uh, this latency. I deliberately didn't put our latest dashboard here. Uh, we added uh, Disk, uh, disk I.O. wait times uh, on top because we sat down, uh, we look at this dashboard, uh, we realized that we cannot uh, figure out what was the cause and we, need, uh, we, we figured out that we needed to improve this dashboard. So we added uh, disk I.O. stats on top. And then you have the full picture. 
disk, uh, there was disk latency on AWS EBS volume, which caused the latency, and Cassandra node responded with uh, drop messages. And this is whole journey, and it's easy to reason about the uh, whole problem looking at single, single dashboard. Uh, and last but not least, because now we have combined uh, metrics and logs, uh, we want to, as I said, step away from uh, building uh, this monitoring stack, playing with dashboard. No one wants to pay, uh, pay for us to uh, visualize stuff and do these cool things. Uh, people, you, you need to develop uh, features and uh, leave machine to do alerting and let you know when uh, it is your time to investigate. It is similar like in car, uh, in car example. Usually your dashboard is uh, dark uh, and uh, when you have certain failures, certain problem with, uh, with the car, certain lights will pop up and you know that it is time to call mechanic. It is same in, in IT systems. You will define your alerts uh, and uh, uh, you will have your support uh, team react on, uh, on those alerts. Uh, alerting, alerting uh, as I said, is giving you freedom to step away from dashboards. Uh, this is also important. Someone else placed uh, domain knowledge uh, about alerts when designing alerts. So this uh, makes it possible not to have only experts looking at uh, uh, certain dashboards, knowing uh, which are thresholds of good uh, healthy system and which are thresholds of faulty system. So somebody else created this alert and you can just react and bug this guy, hey, investigate uh, this timestamp. Uh, same story with, uh, as with logs and metrics, alerting is, uh, must, be no, must not be too frequent uh, because you will then start ignoring alerts. So this is really important to keep in mind. Uh, keep your al alerts uh, uh, just, uh, just triggering on important events. It is similar like all of you know the story about uh, boy who cried wolf. Uh, it was boring, he needed to guard the sheep and he was crying wolf uh, two or three times. Uh, people from, from nearby village came. Every time less and less people came from, uh, from uh, village and uh, after three times uh, actual wolf came and uh, he again cried wolf but no one, no one uh, came from village. They were, uh, they, people from village were getting used to false alerts and uh, he used all kinds of false alerts and um, when failure happens, when wolf came, no one reacted. This is scary, sc scary situation and you don't want to be in that situation to get, have failure of your database in production and no one noticing because they have a bunch of uh, emails in a certain, certain folder which are getting ignored. We, were, we realized that we wanted better solution here as well, so we started building Sentinel, a uh, smart alerting solution. Uh, we wanted uh, to have machine learning algorithm uh, crunch these metrics uh, and uh, figure out uh, doing anomaly detection. And uh, we, I think a uh, real problem with alerts is uh, having uh, humans make assumptions about the systems. We are designing, uh, we are designing alerts and uh, we can say that uh, having C CPU on 60% is good, but after 60% we will fire alert. But uh, then again, who knows if uh, we have trend of uh, our instances ha using more and more CPUs. So this needs to move through time and we needed a better solution. So we decided to uh, hook uh, Spark streaming on our stack that I explained. So we have this system which we are, uh, we, we are monitoring, we are storing our metrics into database and we are visualizing metrics using Grafana. But we, also, we are also pushing uh, metrics to Spark and uh, uh, having data models crunching those metrics and uh, checking out when certain values uh, are, are, are outside of uh, boundaries. After that happens, we want email to be fired to maintenance guys, providing full snapshot of the systems. This email looks like this. It has all the important numbers for someone to reason about. Uh, it has in colored in red uh, uh, 
stat that uh, triggered the uh, trigger the alert. In this case, uh, disk weight, uh, disk IO was the main cause of uh, this alert, and we wanted the uh, machine to have a di uh, diagnostics message. So in the last sentence, it is said that disk IO was higher than usual during that time, and there is a link to Grafana dashboard uh, with specific uh, disk statistics. So it is good for someone who don't want to browse through all the graphs and uh, stuff. Uh, this, this is a summary and it, it provides uh, one click uh, to dashboard which, which probably has a source of the problem. This is still work on pro in progress. Uh, we are planning to, this is alert, so some, something uh, already happened. What we want to do is to push these metrics uh, through some neural network or something like that and try to predict uh, based on trends uh, when certain, to do pre predictive uh, maintenance where, through so certain trends to figure out when problem will happen and then there is time to react. Uh, then, then you can do something about it. Okay, and uh, to conclude, uh, I want to emphasize a couple of uh, important uh, things that I touched upon this presentation. Uh, I emphasize this uh, in metrics uh, stack, in log stack, and in alerting stack. Uh, you need to have right amount of information. You it's, it's scary to have uh, too much information because this will be noise and uh, you will ignore things. It's scary to have too few information because you, could, you, you will not be able to explain uh, problematic situation. You need to have a good selection of metrics uh, on your dashboards. Uh, you need to have good selection of logs. Um, and this is iterative process. I mentioned that we in company have uh, retro metrics monitoring retrospective meetings. We sit down, all of us uh, in team, and we speak uh, which dashboards do you look, uh, which logs uh, are polluting uh, your logs, and which are providing informational, uh, important information. Is there something? that is missing that you would like to add. Uh, and we are constantly changing uh, monitoring stack. Uh, I think it's important to have this up to date because it's your main source of uh, truth when failure happens. Do not end up fixing monitoring machine instead of fixing uh, application business logic. This is also important. I spoke uh, today a lot about uh, open source stack that we use, self-managed stack, but there, this is, there, and you, you can think that it is silver bullet, but uh, we ended up uh, working on monitoring stack more than on our, our application stack. It's distributed systems system. Monitoring stack is one more system on, under your hand, and your IT department will have to scale this system to uh, fix stuff uh, to, e even worse, we had the situation that uh, failure on our monitoring stack uh, propagated to failure on our instances because logs were piling up and we took uh, all of our disk space. Luckily, it was in staging environment, but uh, this can, these things can happen when, while on software as a service solution, somebody else takes care of that. Be proactive, not reactive. Uh, this is uh, something that we are trying to do with Sentinel. So we are trying to push our metrics to, uh, to neural network and do predictive, and predictive maintenance. And uh, tailor metrics by your needs. Uh, every use case is different. If you have specific uh, use cases, we did uh, build stuff. We built the diagnostic solution for Cassandra because uh, solutions out there couldn't provide uh, uh, latencies for all the queries. Uh, usually they were working uh, through percentiles and the uh, highest per percentile is 99.9% .9 request and we needed two more nines. So we needed to look at uh, really all, all queries and we decided to go and build, build, uh, build a tool which will aid us in, the, in this. Links, uh, I blogged uh, about this topic uh, a lot, so I covered uh, three parts of this uh, presentation in more details. If you, if you want, uh, you can check it out. Uh, explain this monitoring stack uh, which uh, we are using. Uh, I explain distributed logging and metrics uh, stream. Here is my Twitter handle. Maybe I could say that this, emphasize this on the beginning of, uh, of uh, presentation. I posted the uh, 
uh, this presentation on SlideShare so I could save you a, a couple of pictures. Uh, you can check me on Twitter and you can get this presentation. And last link is our GitHub project uh, where we uh, automated this monitoring machine. Uh, there is Ansible project uh, which and you can spin up uh, this monitoring machine and uh, play around with it. Uh, it, it has Riemann, Influx, Grafana, ELK uh, on it and you can check it out and you can play uh, locally with it and check how, how, how this, how everything works. And that's basically it. Uh, I ran through it uh, a bit faster than I <laughs> expected, but it's a lunch time, so yes, it's a good thing. I'm open for any questions. Yeah, questions. I want to give you the micro. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, what I'm about to ask you is more of a thought experiment than anything else. Um, so some of the logging that I concern myself with had to do with uh, machine learning stuff. So recomm recommendation engines and you name it. And some of the stuff you can measure, like the click-through rate, how well are we doing. That's something you can plot over time and that works. There's also other internal stuff, numerics. Are things converging kind of nicely and you name it. And these plots at some point become kind of complicated to the extent that you need more than just a simple line chart. I've been playing in my head with the thought of, you know, if all the logs go to some nice central place, I could have an IPython notebook, like one of those Jupyter notebooks with the plotting and stuff, and put that in the cron thing that would just run every day where I get all the other stuff I might be interested in. Mm -hmm. um, is this something you guess could be uh, something you could consider? Because it, it feels like it is a little bit hacky. Um, just wondering what your opinion on something like that might be. We're doing the same thing with uh, metrics. Uh, we currently concentrated on metrics and build a Spark stream where we are doing machine learning on metrics. So, but you have this, you will have logs in Elasticsearch. So I guess you can use Elasticsearch APIs and uh, uh, start uh, doing some clever stuff on logs and uh, return either metrics to InfluxDB, rollups, or I don't know how many times. Uh, certain X uh, appeared or something like that. So makes sense. I don't know if Elasticsearch is not uh, the best uh, tool for the job. Logs can be stored in some other place, but uh, Elasticsearch is good because it provides full text search. So you can work with these strings. Also, you can push uh, logs in parallel to Elasticsearch and to something else which you are using for uh, machine learning. So it makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Next question was here somewhere. Hi. Uh, do you have any insights on uh, file bit semantics or guarantees? I mean, you don't want uh, duplicate log entries in case of network failure or if uh, file bit crashes. Will you miss log entries from your log? Yeah, uh, that's, a <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, running to monitoring your monitoring stack. Uh, so uh, FileBeat, uh, you can configure amount of things uh, with FileBeat and uh, it has back pressure, it, has, it is uh, saving uh, events. Uh, if your Elasticsearch, for example, or Logstash is not responsive, it will start, start uh, collecting uh, events and just push them when uh, there is a network connection in between. But, uh, uh, yeah, this is important thing. Uh, I guess you need to monitor your monitoring stack. You, it, it would be wise to have certain insights even on file bit on each machine to, to figure out. We managed to fill up uh, space with file bit events while Elasticsearch is, was not r responsive. This is the situation which I mentioned on staging environment. So file bit logs which were waiting for network connection uh, started piling up and this caused uh, failure on instance where your database is, which is scary, which is really scary. So it makes, Riemann, for example, comes with uh, its own monitor, its, in, its, o, its own metrics, and uh, you can visualize metrics about Riemann client and server. So you always know how your Riemann server performs, which is part of your monitoring stack, but it is also emitting metrics uh, about its performance. Any questions left for Ninat? Then, Ninat, thank you very much for this interesting talk. Thank you. And <laughs>